In this episode, we are going to be doing a detailed disassembly of the trigger group and buttstock. But before we get started, I will repeat the same things that I've said in the last couple of videos. And that is to first watch or skim this entire video so you kind of know what to expect if you're going to uh, do this process. Second is when disassembling any firearm, I recommend a pair of safety glasses. That way you don't catch an errant spring or plunger or anything to your eye. And finally, if you notice that you are missing or have a damaged part, uh, check the links in the description as I will again post links to websites where you can find parts. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first thing with any gun, we're going to want to make sure it's unloaded. So we're going to press our bolt catch, charge the barrel. There's that dummy round that I had in there. And now we are going to close our bolt so there's nothing in the chamber, nothing in the magazine. Go ahead and close your bolt. And now you'll press down on your takedown screw lock and then unscrew your takedown screw. That seems loose and it'll break apart. So now we've already done these two groups. We won't need these. So you can just set this assembly aside. What I like to do next is while holding your hammer, pull the trigger and let your hammer down. That way you don't accidentally hit it and uh, pinch your fingers in there or have it come back and smack your finger. So let that down. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna undo your tang screw. And your tang screw is holding your, they call this, this whole metal piece the guard, officially. Uh, that's holding your guard to your buttstock, but you have spring tension with your bolt spring that runs down through the buttstock. So when you unscrew your tang screw, uh, you're gonna wanna hold uh, your, your guard to your buttstock. Um, you can do that, you can set it up on something, just something to keep it from flying apart. So I'm gonna hold on to it, get a good grip on it and Undo the tang screw here. Not quite. Got it. So as you can see, the spring tension is just pushing it apart. And it helps to keep your hand, so I'll get this spring out of the way so you can see. It helps to keep your hand above or over the top part of the tang because as you're coming out oftentimes the spring will just you know squeak up out of there and just want to go all over the place so uh, as your tang screw is out and I guess while we're here there are depending on what model you have there are different tang screws there is a tang screw for a pistol grip stock, which is what I have here, and a tang screw for a straight grip stock, which wouldn't have this bulge here, this pistol grip. Uh, so that would make your, your butt stock a little different dimension. And I guess they manufacture uh, a different length or a different style 
of tang screw. So now that we have that apart, we will continue on. So we will just kind of set these aside for now and talk about the buttstock a little bit. So from where your bolt spring came out of, you know, take that bolt spring out. Inside of there is a bolt spring stop rod. Um, might be in there pretty good. You can see down that hole. That's the end of it right there. And it's just kind of held in place by friction. So it might not want to come out of there. And I don't know if I have anything small enough to reach in there and grab it. There we go. Just kind of need to shimmy around. So that's your bolt spring, and this is your bolt spring stop rod. And it basically just sits in there like that. And it's just a way to guide this spring as it compresses. So it's not just all over the place down in that hole. This offers some, some guide, but not a whole lot. Uh, the captive quality that you find in the, the Browning Auto 5 design was patented, so they had to do this. So there's your, your bolt spring, and you could, it looks like you could take this apart a little more. Um, most manuals and things that I've seen, this is, this is just one piece, but there does appear to be a pin or a roll pin of sorts that you could take, you could punch out and take this metal cap off, which would then get you to this little washer here. Uh, but that's just a piece of wood down in there that is your bolt spring stop rod. So we'll put that back in our bolt spring and just set that aside. Also on your butt stock, you have a tang screw friction plunger, that piece right there. And underneath that is a tang screw friction plunger spring. So that does press in and out a little bit. And to be honest, I don't know how that is in there. I don't know how they got that in there. I don't know if it was screwed in there i don't know that's one one thing that i haven't been able to to figure out how that is in there and how they keep that spring the tank screw friction plunger spring from just pressing it all the way out so but so you are aware there are two little parts right in there and on your tang screw you have little grooves up near the head that when you are screwing down into your, your tang, that tang screw friction plunger bites on those little grooves just to act as, act as a, a locking mechanism on that. 
So let me get this out of here and we will continue on. So that's your tang screw, tang screw friction plunger, and tang screw friction plunger spring that is underneath that. Set that aside. And like most, pretty much all guns, you will have your butt plate and two butt plate screws, which we will quickly undo. And while I'm unscrewing these, you can see that somewhere along the almost 100 year history of this gun, someone has put screws in the, the buttstock here. And those were holding together cracks that I have since repaired since I got this gun. And I also uh, refit, I drilled out and refit these screw holes with some dowel rods and Gorilla Glue in there. Uh, they were just completely almost stripped out, just real big holes. So I had to drill those out, glue a dowel rod in there, drill new holes uh, that would fit these these screws good. Uh, you do have a little bit of a empty space here. I don't know if that was for weight savings or just when they were producing the stock, what they needed to do. This is a laminate stock. They are original with a laminate stock. It's three pieces of wood, got a left side, a center, and you can see those lines, and a right side. And I believe this was the first implementation of a laminate stock in a production gun. And it just had to do to the, the recoil forces of this gun. And laminates are just a tad stronger than just a, a straight piece of wood. So now that we have those apart, that's your butt plate. They are original. I believe they're original with a butt plate, not a butt pad. Uh, this gun, when I bought it, did come with a butt pad that somewhere along its history had been added. Just a, a pointer pad is what was on it. But like I said, I believe they are original. They are original with a butt plate, hard rubber butt plate. Most reproductions, as this one is, is a hard plastic butt plate, and I had to shape this one a little bit to get it to match the contours. The length pull on this gun is incredibly short due to, I think, someone cutting it down and then adding a butt pad. So just kind of part of the history on this particular gun, but that's your butt plate screws and butt plate and your butt stock. So we will set these aside and get into your guard and your main components in the guard. So before I get too far from this point, uh, on your bolt spring, where your bolt spring comes up into this hole, at the very front of that, uh, this little cup looking piece, that is your bolt spring follower. Uh, you can just press that cup right there, give you a better look. That's where your bolt operating rod rests down in there. You can just press that down and it'll come out of that hole. Uh, so since that was related to the bolt spring, I thought we would get that out now. And you can just go ahead and set that aside with your bolt spring. That is your bolt spring follower. All right, now next up on this guard here, we are going to work on the takedown screw components. And you've got your takedown screw. You've got a takedown screw stop that is on that screw. It's very similar to your uh, bolt or excuse me, your barrel buffer nut stop. It just keeps these male threads from engaging the female threads that are on the inside of there. And then you've got your takedown screw 
lock and underneath that since it rebounds back you've got your takedown screw lock spring so to get this takedown screw stop off and uh, make sure you can see it it's just a split ring washer that is wrapped around your takedown screw what i have found is to just take two small screwdrivers put them on rotate it where you can get both ends and just press down where they try to come together i just give equal pressure on both sides and it'll start to come off so you can see i've got a little gap there and then i'll just stick head of a screwdriver down in that gap in between there and pull it the rest of the way off. So this is a pretty small part. This is your takedown screw stop. So I, I just put it on a little magnet tray or if you just have, you know, fridge, kitchen magnets, whatever, just something to where that won't slide off your table and lose that because it's pretty small. So just set it down on a magnet and that'll hold it there. So next up is your takedown screw and you'll press down on your takedown screw lock and make sure those threads find each other nice. Start unscrewing and at, at some point, I don't know what makes it so, uh, every once in a while mine has just a little difficult part in unscrewing it, but this time it just seemed to slide right out. So that is your takedown screw there. And then your takedown screw lock will slide right out and your takedown screw lock spring. And how those were sitting in there, your takedown screw lock has a little lip on it. That lip goes down in there, and then obviously your spring would be underneath it in that little hole. Like so. So those are your takedown screw components. Now out of there, uh, we will set these aside and move on to the next piece. Okay, so next up, we're just kind of going to go in order of ease of getting to parts. Because, I mean, we don't want to do all this stuff down here before we get these out of here. So next up will be our hammer spring hammer spring guide rod and hammer spring guide rod pin right there. And the hammer spring guide rod pin, if you can see those little divots or dents in it, uh, I assume from the manufacturer they were staked, which just means they, they put a little punch and displace metal on both the hammer and the hammer spring guide rod pin. And it just makes it so when you, basically if you displace that metal, it now doesn't want to rotate anywhere other than just having a, a smooth surface to rotate around in there. Um, prior to, to shooting this video, I've tested to see if that'll come out and it does appear to come out pretty easy. And I don't have a punch that small, so I'm just going to be using a, uh, a finishing nail that I've taken the, the point off of. So you'll just set it down. Try to do all this so you guys can see. Set it down on there. 
doing some taps. As you can see, it is starting to come out there. And you're gonna have a little bit of spring tension here, but as you drive a pin through, your pin should absorb the brunt of it. Just continue driving it out. So, pin came out, that is your hammer spring guide rod pin. And so now your punch is holding you know, that hammer spring tension. So if you pull that out, just kind of keep it all covered up with your hands. And that releases. So without the spring tension on there, I'll show you what I did. So basically once it comes out, you'll just slide it up and it'll come out of this place hole back here. And that's it. So that is your hammer spring guide rod, hammer spring guide rod pin, and your hammer spring there. So we will kind of keep these groups together just so I don't lose anything and put that aside. And we will move on to the next piece. All right, so with those components out, your hammer uh, now just moves freely. It does still, on this edge right here, it does still lock back on the sear, which then pulling the trigger releases it. Um, so in the order that we're going, our next piece will be the hammer and the hammer pin. And I recall from the first time that I took this gun apart, this hammer pin is quite difficult to remove. Most, it seems like it's kind of a rule of thumb. You remove pins from left to right, and then you reinsert them right to left. Obviously that rule changes if pins are tapered a certain way. And when you're taking apart a gun for the first time, you might not know what the pin situation is. So if I'm ever testing, I'll give a few whacks this way. If nothing happens, I'll give a few whacks this way. Sometime I'll put some uh, WD-40 in there, just if it's old and dirty, loosen things up a little bit. But if I recall correctly, this pin comes out just fine left to right. Uh, but it does take uh, a good couple wax. So I will get my punch and you wanna use a punch that is as close to that as possible, the size of that pin. Like obviously I wouldn't use my nail here to try to drive out a pin that's almost three times its size. You want a punch that is about the same size. And I'll use my improvised punch block here. And again, I'm going left to right. I will zoom out so you get the full picture here. So as you can see, it's, it's coming a little bit, but this one does take some real solid wax. all the way out
need a little more elevation. That pin's running into my bench. And if I don't, if I don't have to go all the way out, um, I won't. I just got enough to where the hammer, I just got more than enough to clear the hammer. So I don't necessarily need to go all the way out, uh, but for video's sake, I will. Uh, you know, if you have to replace that pin or something and get it all the way out of there. But it, uh, it sure is in there. All right, so some good solid wax, and uh, it does appear to have, I don't remember this from the first time, but it does appear to have a, a flat spot on it right there. I don't know if that's how it's supposed to be or if that's just from from use but that I mean that probably acts as a whether it's on purpose or not that will act as almost like a, a lock kind of to hold it in place um, if if this pin is crazy hard which I, I did the first time I took it to some 600 grit sandpaper and just all the way around, smoothed it down, took a teeny, teeny, teeny little bit of material off of it. And you can see how difficult it still was. Um, imagine if it was, the diameter was just a touch bigger, it'd be even harder. So that is an option. If it's ridiculously hard, just take it to some real fine grit sandpaper and rotate and sand it all even uh, don't go too aggressive because it's always easier it's a lot easier to take metal off than to put it back on as the saying goes so just go little by little until you feel that that you're in a position where you want to be so that is your hammer and your hammer pin so we will keep that group together set them aside and move on to our next pieces all right next up is our timing rod pieces so this piece that's moving here that is your timing rod and as the name would suggest it has to do with timing issues with when the gun will go off when things are in when other parts are in certain positions this 
is what I was having issues with originally, and we'll talk about it once we get the gun all back together, after you know what all these parts do. This is what I was having issues with in having a dead trigger when I originally purchased this gun. So your timing rod that is moving there continues on to your timing rod pin. Your timing rod pin holds your timing rod and your timing rod operating lever together. So that's your timing rod operating lever. Your timing rod operating lever is held in place by a timing rod operating lever pin. And up inside here is a timing rod operating lever spring, which I can pull it back, but it goes forward on its own because of spring tension. So we will use our little nail improvised punch. And this pin feels pretty loose. Yeah, it feels like I'm just gonna be able to push that out with hand pressure. So that's your timing rod operating lever pin. So it'll push out and your spring tension will hold your punch in there. So we'll set that right up there. And just kind of, since there is a spring in there and I'm not sure exactly which way it's gonna go, I'll put my fingers over there while I pull my punch out and then just kind of ease down. Okay, so the spring was on the bottom of it. It goes up into a hole on your timing rod operating lever. And it actually, so now that you've got that out, this assembly, I believe, nope, that's not gonna come out just yet, but I will, Try and dump that spring out of there so I don't lose it. So that spring was up inside your timing rod operating lever. It was sitting up inside there like that. Oh, you gotta have your safety off. Uh, so you can pull the trigger up and that should give it hopefully clearance. Yeah. So that gave it clearance. So this foot on your timing rod is in this slot here, but it's also up against this wall at the back of your guard. So you just need to have your safety off, pull your trigger so that moves up, and then that gives it enough clearance to come out of, from behind that wall. So there's your timing rod, your timing rod operating lever, and that pin appears to have a stake mark in it, but we will see if we can punch that out. All right, we'll see if this works a little better for me. Got a little more support on there, and that pin, no, well, I actually might just be able to do that. Put it right over that hole that I have drilled in there. Yep. But now, oh, good, yeah, it went all the way through. <laughs> so that's a real tiny little pin that holds your, <clears throat> excuse me, holds your timing rod and your timing rod operating lever together. Really small there. And the way your spring was in here, just while we've got this all apart, so your spring, timing rod operating lever spring, was up in your timing rod operating lever, and it was pressed up into your operating lever by the timing rod operating lever. No, by your timing rod, excuse me. Man, a lot of part names to try to remember here. So that spring is held up in place by the timing rod and it springs back and forth like that. So we will keep these parts together and the names, once again, timing rod, timing rod, operating lever pin. Nope, sorry, 
timing rod, timing rod pin, timing rod operating lever, timing rod operating lever pin, timing rod operating lever spring. So we will keep these together, put them on our, have a magnet tray. You can use any type of magnet you want, but just keep those parts together. Don't want to lose any of them. Don't want them rolling around. Okay. Little by little, we're getting there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next up will be our trigger. So our sear, our sear spring, our trigger, and our trigger spring are all held in by one pin. Okay, according to my parts list, and we'll see as we get to them because I don't remember exactly where they are. So you've got your trigger pin. So your trigger, trigger pin. You've got a trigger spring somewhere that is returning the trigger to its home position. I, I think it's right back here. But it also says we have a trigger pin, or excuse me, a trigger spring plunger. And then we've got our sear and our sear spring somewhere down in there. So we will knock out this trigger pin here while holding our thumb or something over this just because I'm not sure where springs are going to go. And we'll stick with the, the rule of thumb of knocking it out left to right as you're looking down the gun left to right. Punch is a little too big. That's just about perfect. And as we as we punch through, we'll we'll try to maintain our fingers over things. But if we get our punch through, our punch should then hold on to things like our trigger pin is doing. But we'll find out. And it looks like we got another stubborn pin here. And I think my punch is just a tad too big. So we will go to a, uh, another nail that I have. It's a little smaller. Hopefully it doesn't bend this nail over. which it looks like it's trying to do to my nail. Let's maybe try a little heavier gauge on there. go get down in there all right so there's your pin so your trigger pin is out and like the hammer pin it has a flat spot that acts as a lock of some sort Um, I think when I put these back in, I'll put a mark of some sort on one end so I know where the locking end is. Just so if I ever have to do this again, I know what is what. So that's your hammer pin. And our punch is now taking the place so everything should still be under spring tension. I'm gonna put my finger on the trigger, not 
pulling it, but just on it. And on this assembly up above here, so as I pull this pin out, sorry for the camera movement, as I pull this pin out, it will catch on my fingers and just slowly let go. Okay, so we will take our sear out first. And it looks like there's our sear spring. So your sear has a divot in that end where the sear spring sits. And your trigger will come out the, I'd like to keep the parts together while I take them out, out the top. Okay, so there is your trigger, your trigger spring, and your trigger spring plunger, which your plunger looks like it sits up against your safety there. So in the safe position, well, let's let's see what happens when we. So I'll leave the the trigger spring and the trigger spring plunger out. I'm going to put my trigger back in to see how our safety works. I'll put my punch in place so the trigger has something to pivot around, but no spring tension. Just gravity at the point at this point. So with our safety on. I believe that that wall that we could see, and I'll show you again, that wall comes up in the way of the trigger. So you can't pull it all the way with the safety off. It's able to go all the way and would fire the gun. So we'll take that holding pin out and look at our safety. So in the safety off or safety fire position, we've got total clearance and it appears based on the wear marks that our plunger just sits up against the safety and it can slide back and forth. But when you move to the safe position, that little wall comes out which blocks the trigger from going all the way in. So on your trigger, while we're here, your trigger, your trigger spring, and your trigger, so your trigger's got a little hole in it where your trigger spring goes into, and your trigger spring plunger sits in like so and that provides return the return tension for your trigger so we will set all these aside uh, one more time just so you know sear sear spring trigger trigger spring and trigger spring plunger so i'll set these aside and we will continue on. Okay, we've only got one more group left on, as I said before, this whole thing is called the guard, officially. Uh, the only parts that we have left are your safety, which officially, per the manual, is called the trigger lock. So you've got your trigger lock. There's a trigger lock up in here, there's a trigger lock plunger and a trigger lock plunger spring. And to get to those, <clears throat> you're going to need a very, very small punch that fits in there. Uh, you're not going to be you're not going to be pounding on it, so you don't worry have, have to worry about it bending. So what I used 
was a, a very small safety pin that I filed the point off of. And what you're going to do is you're going to push up through that hole. And when you push up through that hole, that hole goes all the way to the trigger lock plunger. Which up above that is the trigger lock plunger spring. Bend this a little bit so it's easier. So you'll push up against that spring tension and push your trigger lock or your safety in a little bit. So now the trigger lock plunger is just kind of teetering on the edge of the trigger lock. So you can pull this punch out, but so there's spring tension behind that trigger lock plunger. So put your thumb in the way, pull your pin out, and just continue pushing your trigger lock through to the other side. And I felt that trigger lock plunger hit my thumb. And that's it sitting right there. It'll dump out along with your spring. Don't let that run away. So there is your trigger lock, your trigger lock plunger and your trigger lock plunger spring and how those are set up in there so your plunger has a a tapered rounded end and a flat end your flat end goes up against your spring and up inside the guard while the tapered rounded end sits in either of those two detents there. So that would be safety off, safety on. Safety off, safety on. It just goes back and forth in there while the spring is pressing down. Uh, due to this gun's age, there should be a red painted ring right there. And that indicates If it were in the gun, that indicates when the safety is pushed to the off position, you should be able to see red there, like on most guns, but just due to the age of this gun, that's all been worn off. So know that. Also, per the manual, there is a left-handed trigger lock that I assume it's just extended the other way and your ring is on the other side. So a left-handed, because normally for right-handers, just pushing in on the safety disengages it so you can then push it off and then pull the trigger. Whereas putting it on, you use your thumb. For a left-hander, it would be just the opposite where you would push it off with your index finger and then you'd be ready to pull the trigger and you would push it on in that manner. So I haven't really looked online specifically for the left-handed version, but I know per the manual, a left-handed trigger lock was manufactured originally. So that again is your trigger lock, trigger lock plunger, trigger lock plunger spring and that is a complete disassembly of your guard on the Winchester model 1911 SL shotgun all right so now we're going to start the reassembly process and we will just go in reverse order uh, hopefully if I can remember the exact order in which I took them out but we will start with our trigger lock, trigger lock plunger, and trigger lock plunger spring. So we will insert our trigger lock. And if you have the, the right-handed version, if you're looking you know, down the gun like you're shooting it, your detents 
there. We'll go in right to left. Don't insert it all the way across yet, but you'll pop your trigger lock plunger spring in its appropriate hole there, just on the back of the trigger guard. And your trigger lock plunger spring, the flat end, it has a flat and tapered end, the flat end will go down in the hole. And what you'll do is you'll press on that with a flathead screwdriver or any tool while pressing your trigger lock through. And it might not be rotated in the exact position you need it. And when you're, when you're doing stuff like that, always try to keep a finger around so pins don't fly out. But the position that it should be in, that tiny little hole should be pointing straight down. And you know it's in there when you get those detent clicks back and forth. Okay, next up is the trigger. Well, it's kind of a, a series of parts. Your sear, sear spring, trigger, trigger spring, and trigger spring plunger, and your trigger pin holds those all together. So your sear spring, there's a divot in the, the underside of your sear. Your sear spring will sit in between that, and there's a hole in the front of your trigger that that spring will go down into and those holes need to line up for your pin to go through. So that's how those will sit in there while also lining up your trigger spring and trigger spring plunger go down into that hole like so. Those go into that hole like so and then your pin would be driven through. So it's kind of a mix of getting your fingers in the right place, holding your tongue in the right place, while keeping your fingers over things so they don't go shooting out. Patience is what it takes. So just lightly hold your trigger in place, put your sear spring down in side of your trigger. And since our trigger pin is kind of hard to put through, a lot of times you'll use a, a placeholder pin or punch that is a lot easier to insert. Just so once you get the spring tension down, you don't have to hold it there and drive a pin through. You just place this through and then as you punch your pin through, it takes up the place of your placeholder pin. And hopefully I'm not rambling too much. I'm just trying to do the best job of explaining this that I can. And I'm gonna try and put my placeholder pin through just so I can start lining things up. You can see my, my I'm getting bound up down here so I can't pull the trigger. All right, pull the trigger. Maybe I'll just start 
with the trigger first. Just make sure everything is good on that. Just really wants to squeak out of there the wrong way. All right. So I know the trigger spring and trigger plunger, trigger spring plunger, are compressed down into that hole. So I'm going to try and get. Just one in that placeholder pin, just one end through. So that'll hold my trigger in place. And now I can try to push my sear up against its spring. Push it back to line up with those holes. Like, oh, I'm almost there. Okay, so now that assembly is back together. Everything has good spring tension and everything returns. So now, since we drove our pin out, left to right, we'll drive it back in, right to left. And like I said, I'm going to mark this flat end here. just so I know for future reference. And that may wear off as I punch it back in, but I will remark it. So I just put a black mark on the end of that pin. So now your placeholder pin, you're not gonna wanna pull that out because all that spring tension will get released. But as you punch, your placeholder pin in, it should take up the exact position of, so as you punch your pin in, your trigger pin, it'll take up the exact place of your placeholder pin. And you can even press up against it a little bit, just so you know just so you know it stays and it doesn't bounce out and then you lose all that tension. All right, so it's through enough to now where, I mean, there was only maybe a 16th of an inch left. So that it was that flat. So this pin was really easy to drive in until I got to that flat portion on that pin. And you're just gonna wanna make sure that is flush because it will need to be flush to insert it back into the receiver. A touch more. Yeah, so when you get to that flat section on that pin, 
it really locks down. So since we put it in the rule of thumb way, we put it in right to left. Now the next time if it is needed, it should punch out just fine left to right. And check to make sure all the springs function properly. They appear to be. So I will grab the next part and we will work on it. Next up is our timing rod pieces. So that will be our timing rod, timing rod pin, timing rod operating lever, timing rod operating lever spring, and timing rod operating lever pin. So again, this is a exercise in patience to get this back together. So we will just do it in the reverse order, which was our timing rod operating lever, operating lever, get it where you can see it, timing rod operating lever, timing rod, and timing rod pin. So we will punch these back together. Maybe just get it started a little bit so I don't have to hold on to it. Okay, make sure you're flush on both sides. So now your timing rod, operating lever spring will go up inside your timing rod operating lever. You'll press it in and fold down. And it looks like there's, there's two different ends so there's an end that is just kind of an open spring. And then there's an end that is more closed off. It would make sense to have that open end of the spring go up inside your timing operating, timing lever operating rod. Timing rod operating lever, excuse me. <laughs> Um, that way when it's folded up and down here up against your timing rod, the open end of that spring isn't going to bind up on anything. So you just push it up in, making sure it's not folded as you push it up in there. And now you will insert this and push it through and it will go unfold it here so I can show you better. So the foot on it matches up in that slot in the back of the trigger and the trigger will have to be pulled for it to slide up under there. So put our spring back in, compress, hold in, 
And then while you do that, and get it in the right position while maintaining the spring tension, you'll have to take your timing rod operating lever pin and push it through your timing rod operating lever and the placeholder. And sometimes you can use a, a placeholder pin like we did down here with the, the trigger. So, and we might have to, it's probably gonna be easier just to fold that spring afterwards. So just get your timing rod in first. Pull the trigger up, let it slide down in there. And then when you let your trigger go, it is locked in place. It can't go anywhere. So now we will try and fold We'll push our spring in sufficiently and try to fold that piece up. And you might have to use something else to wedge down in there until that hole looks free. And then place your timing rod operating lever pin in there. Shimmy around until it falls in there. All right. That, uh, that is how we want it. So it should be your timing rod should be pressing up against the back of your sear. And if you press down on the front of your sear, the spring tension should press your timing rod operating, no, just your timing rod, under the back end of your sear. So if we press down on the front end, saw it popped under there. And then upon pulling the trigger, it lifts that entire assembly. So we can just push it back out of the way for now. That is in there how we want it. And we will move on to our next pieces. All right, so next up is going to be our hammer and its components. We're going to put the, we're gonna put this assembly together first and then put this entire assembly back in the guard. So we're going to put our hammer spring guide rod, hammer spring and hammer spring guide rod pin back in to the hammer. Might have to just get this pin started a little bit. Good. Put your hammer spring guide rod in there. Put 
try to get it down flush. Should be good. So now that is in there. And now we'll take this assembly and your hammer spring guide rod. So on your hammer spring, both ends are the same. They're just an open foot on that spring. So it doesn't matter which way it goes on. But your hammer spring guide rod will go in that hole on this, this metal block here. And then we'll have to compress the spring to find where our hammer pin can go through all of those. So put that on there. Try to push it down in that hole, making sure your leg of your spring doesn't slide down in there as well. All right, and I'm probably gonna use a placeholder pin again, just so I don't have to maintain holding it. But this spring is just really stiff and it just takes a lot of effort to hold it back down in there while the rod goes through that hole. Just a lot of, again, patience. Because that leg on this spring, it really wants to go inside that hole back there. And that'll just make it so things bind up so that that can't happen. All right, okay, so we've got our placeholder pin in there. And our hammer pin has the flat section, which is going to be on the right-hand side as we drive it through right to left. I'm also gonna have it pointing down that flat section so it doesn't reach metal and start getting difficult to punch in until the very last little bit because I want this to go in as easy as possible into this pin because we've got spring tension now here that it just makes it more difficult if you have to fight it with that flat portion up as you're going in. And you're going to want to make sure your placeholder pin doesn't come out because then it'll get all uh, screwed up and kitty wampus and you'll probably have to start this process over again which I've now done a couple times 
and again all you need is patience <laughs> so i'm going to push my placeholder pin down to the edge so i can get my hammer pin started And maintain a finger or something on your placeholder pin so it stays in there but as you can see in my case my placeholder pin is much smaller than the actual hammer pin so as it comes out your hammer is gonna rotate because of the tolerance difference so you might have to you know wedge or turn your hammer a little bit to make it so you can drive that pin in because if you don't and it's and it's turned you're just hitting this pin up against the hammer with it out actually going into the hole that is in the hammer so a lot to maintain and think about and do And I can tell by looking at this front here that my hammer pin is just running into the, the side of the hammer. So I need to push kind of back and rotate it a little bit. And hopefully it'll go in there. Leave it went in there. Feels like it. Don't think it did. You actually might be able to use your placeholder pin as some leverage as well. I don't know if you can see that moving. So I'll try and hold everything still. And as I press forward on my placeholder pin it kind of lines up those holes I'm pretty sure that's in there. Yeah, it's going through. Okay, it's going through there. And you're just going to want to go down until your pin is flush with this, this bottom ledge here, not this top one.
when I touch more than flush, so I'll go back a couple blacks. And you can uh, check, make sure it functions. So your hammer locks back on your sear. And when you pull the trigger, it releases the sear from the hammer. And to check the flushness of that pin, You can grab your receiver. I'm going to put my hammer back, put the safety on. You can check. Make sure it fits up in there. I don't know if we're flush. Because of how it doesn't slide on there very well. Looks like we're not back quite far enough. Slides on a little better. And you can probably fine tune it to where it slides on and off there, really nice. Like so. All right. It's good enough on that. I'll set this back aside. Okay, and lastly, we have our takedown components. Takedown screw, takedown screw stop, takedown lock, takedown screw lock, and takedown screw lock spring. Down in there. So, we will just set in place. So, your takedown screw lock spring goes into the little hole on your takedown screw lock. Kind of hold that in place as you put this lip into the top of the tang. And just kind of drop it in place. And if you can press down and it springs back up, you know your, your spring's in the right place. So we will then Thread our takedown screw on there. And you'll have to press your takedown screw lock out of the way. up to a certain point. When you get to the end of the threads, you can just let everything go. And now your takedown screw stop will, there's a, so once you get past the threads, there's a tiny little groove that goes all the way around your takedown screw. That isn't attached to the threads, it's just a single groove that goes around. That is the groove that your takedown screw stop will slide into. 
and I just kind of try to set it on there. and press down it'll be kind of like a push a push fit i just use a flat edge of a screwdriver once i know it's in those grooves and try and press it down and over and due to it being such a small part it may take you a couple tries And you can even try and do it. I'll just go ahead and try it with just the needle nose pliers. Maybe get it over far enough. Yeah, like that. And then finish with a little screwdriver. And then you'll just push it around. Make sure it's in that groove and you're good to go. So that is it for the little tiny components on the guard. This, uh, the trigger guard, tang, all of that's just called the guard. So that's it for the guard. Let me move this aside and we will put our buttstock components back together. So before we get our buttstock components back together, uh, don't forget that we had our bolt spring follower that runs up into that hole on the top of the tang. And this is a perfect time to explain, and I've been alluding to uh, why I had to move everything forward about an eighth of an inch. So, our timing rod operating lever here is connected to our timing rod right there. And when you pull the trigger, that moves the timing rod up, which hits the bottom of the sear, which moves the front of the sear down off of the hammer. So if the gun is cocked, pull the trigger, moves the operating, or the, excuse me, the timing rod up on the bottom of the sear, front of the sear goes down, thus disengaging the hammer, firing the gun. The bolt spring follower slides up over the timing rod operating lever into this groove right here. So as you put it up in there, so here is the, I'll put our hammer down so you can see. Here is the top of our timing rod operating lever. Our bolt spring follower pushes up over it and it sits in that notch that I showed you. So if this acker glass was not here and our wood forend our barrel, our bolt, our locking block operating, or excuse me, our locking block here, our locking block operating rod. If all of that was back an eighth of an inch when you screwed down your magazine tube into the receiver, if all of that was back an eighth of an inch, what happens is our timing rod operating lever doesn't sit in this groove, it sits on uh, this edge here. And when that happens, 
So that's in its correct position right there. If it is back an eighth of an inch, that presses down on the timing rod operating lever, which brings the timing rod back out from under the sear. So if that is pressed back, I pushed it all the way out. So if that's, and you would have spring tension here in the stock with your bolt spring. So if it's pressed back, and you'll watch down here on our timing rod, that's pressed back, it moves my timing rod out from under the sear. So when I pull the trigger, I have a dead trigger because it's not engaging the sear. So thus adding this acker glass, moving everything forward about an eighth of an inch so the barrel, the barrel extension is flush with the receiver that pushes everything. So there's back and down here on my operating rod or timing Sorry, timing, yeah, timing rod. That pushes it forward underneath the sear, which then pushes up on the sear, down on the front end, which disengages the hammer, thus the gun fires. So, I just wanted to briefly explain that in case you are having this issue where you are pulling the trigger and nothing is happening because your timing rod is not engaging the sear. And I assume it's, it's maybe a common issue based on the ones that I have looked online. In the videos, there often appears to be a very large gap where the, the barrel and extension has screwed way down into the receiver, which would cause this whole issue. So I just want to briefly explain that. If you're having that issue, that may be a cause of what is happening, but you can take this apart now and see if there are any other further issues. So now that I've got that explained, we will continue on with our buttstock components and get this finished up. Okay, so the easiest thing to do right now, we'll just go ahead and put our, uh, our butt plate back on and again with metal screws going into wood you're going to want to make sure you find the same threads you don't want to re-thread it every time that's what caused the issue of me having to drill all of that wood out and replace it just over time you know those get stripped out so just make sure you find your same threads. Tighten it down. You don't need to go crazy on these because the tighter you go, the more it's just going to want to strip out. So just, just snug is good. And now your, so our bolt spring follower is up inside the tang, the cup end is facing towards the gun. We have our bolt spring and our bolt spring follower stop rod. So your bolt spring follower stop rod will go down into the hole on the buttstock. The spring will go over it just feeds down in there and because this is not captive like the spring isn't just captive in here by itself you have to force down and compress this spring which can be difficult so you're going to want a screwdriver ready for your tang tang screw
So get your uh, appropriate screwdriver. You're going to want that ready because you're going to have to hold things down tight because this just wants to spring up out of here. My spring I have found, and we'll see if it wants to perform on camera, my spring goes in easier a certain way. And so I have, you can't see it on camera, but I have black Sharpie on this end. And I know that end goes in my tank. Uh, just for whatever reason, it seems to go in easier this way. I don't know if it's because of where certain bends are in the spring. But you'll push it down in there into your buttstock, press it up into that hole on the tang, and really just more patience, just maneuver it down in there, down into your stock, down into your uh, tang here, and use your fingers to kind of block that because it'll want to spring up out of there. So I just kind of feed it down in there. So as you can see, it just wants to spring up out of there like so. I'm actually going to readjust the camera. Uh, just so I can get some leverage down on the bench surface to, to push it down in. So I'll readjust the camera and we'll get this spring in. There. All right, so you've got your spring fed into both your buttstock and the tang. And it's just a little easier to get some leverage going down in here like so. Put your fingers over it right there, and as you push down, just, just try to feed it down in with your fingers. Keep your fingers kind of in the way so it doesn't want to spring out of there. And it's binding, it was binding up on something. Keeps binding up on something in there. Maybe rotate your spring a little bit if there's a bend in it that isn't going how you want it to. There we go. Must have just been a bend in the spring. So now you'll want to maintain pressure on there because that spring really wants to come out of there. And you'll take your tang screw, put it in the bottom, press it in. And you'll start to feel that uh, tang screw plunger grab on those little notches and you'll just go until snug and we're back together so now i'll rearrange the camera and we will finish this entire process all right so now we will take our buttstock and trigger group and put it back onto the rest of the gun i'm going to put my hammer back put my safety on Line everything up, press it back together, press down my takedown screw lock, screw it back in there, 
snug. I'm gonna put our dummy round back in. So we'll press our bolt catch. Charge it open. Place our dummy round in there, close the bolt. Now our safety is on. So our safety works. Safety off. Hammer fell. So I'm just gonna leave that dummy round in there like usual with the hammer in the fired position. And that is the complete disassembly of the trigger and buttstock group. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it helped you out. Hope that I didn't ramble too much. And I will probably be doing one more video in this series just as a conclusion, kind of wrap everything up. And again, thanks for watching and we will see you on the next one.